G-Man Boxing. Do you know what I mean? Every single live he donates. I see him on other lives donating, donating, donating. He's got the bag on it. All right, people. So we had the weigh-in for Joe Joyce versus Joe Parker. It's going to be my final thoughts. I'm going to try and not keep this video out too long. But I found the weigh-ins very interesting. You know, people always, well, some people say to me they don't find heavyweight weigh-ins interesting. I do, because I always find it quite interesting to see what they come in at. I've said this once, I'll say it again. There's no weight limit for heavyweights, but there is, in my opinion, an optimum weight range. Not necessarily a weight per se, but a weight range for a fighter. For example, you could have a fighter who, like Deontay Wilder is a good example, where when he's in the two teens, he tends to be at his best when he's like, say, 215, 218, two, something like that. When he's in the 220s, more so the high 220s, he tends to look a lot worse, you know? So I always find that even though heavyweights don't have to make weight, there is an optimum weight or ballpark weight that they should be in or around. Now, Joe Joyce weighed in a career heavy as 271, which is very heavy, very big guy. Joe Joyce doesn't have to lift any weights. He is just a naturally big, strong unit of a man. And, you know, he, his, his physical strength has to be tremendous. I can only imagine. He's got to be right up there with one of the most physically strong heavyweights in the division. That physical strength has to be tremendous. It really does. But Joe Parker, very interestingly, weighed in 255. Now... What I find interesting about that is, now, I might, it made me start thinking about my prediction. And I may end up with egg on my face for this, but we'll find out tomorrow. But this is just what I'm thinking. Now, the best I've seen Joe Parker in terms of when I think he's at his optimum is when he's in the 230s. When he's in the mid 240s, never mind the 250s, the mid 240s, he tends to plot a lot more. His foot speed really isn't there, and I think Joe pa or Joe Joyce would be actually probably the faster of the two in terms of foot speed, not hand speed. Definitely not hand speed, but the foot speed, yeah. I remember when he fought Huey Fury. Now, Huey Fury, we know, was a mover. Joe Parker really struck. What Joe Parker did he? Like I felt he won the fight, but he was plodding so much around the way ring, looking for one shot at a time. And you could just look, when you look at that fight, you see the foot speed of Joe Parker in that fight. I think he was about 244, 245 in that fight. It just didn't look right. He, he just did not look right. Now, we kind of went back down slightly in weight from then on after. But obviously, when he fought Chazor last year, his first fight with Andy Lee, he was in the 250s for the first time. So, you look at the Chazor fight, and yeah, he won it pretty clearly. He dropped Chazor a couple of times. But he's still lacking a few things. And Jamie said something on the stream we did together on Monday, which was very interesting, which the more I think about it, it does make a lot more sense that maybe Parker has a stamina issue. That maybe he's unsure of his own gas tank. Now, if you're unsure of your own gas tank, coming in at 255, which is a career heaviest, where realistically, I think 20 pounds lighter would be better. That may not help your gas tank if your body is not naturally designed to be that weight. With Parker, I always pinpoint the Carlos Takam fight as a big... Certainly, that was a fight where I know it was the change in Parker. Yeah, he stepped up to more world level. But the tenacity went from him. The ferociousness went from him. The explosiveness, to an extent, went from him. And he just seemed to be a fighter who just... Would win the bare minimum... Would do the bare minimum to win a fight. If that makes sense. So... When he fought Takam, at the time I think Takam only had two losses, one to Pavekin, and I can't remember who the other one was. But the Pavekin loss was a very, very competitive fight before he got knocked out. And that was a big step up. That was a final eliminator for the IBF title, which I think was held by Joshua at the time. So he would have been mandatory for Anthony Joshua. The winner would have been mandatory for Anthony Joshua. And Joe Parker, Takam, it happened in New Zealand. It was a big deal. So in that fight, Joe Parker went the distance. It was very competitive, and he had some really rough moments. I think the eight round, I think it was the eight round specifically, was a round that Joe Parker really struggled in, because it seemed to me as though he was gassing. He was struggling to pace himself, and he was struggling with stamina. Now from then on in, he seemed to really pace himself a bit more in fights. I say pace himself, but 
he seemed to really just win the bare win by the bare minimum. Not exert too much energy in a fight. If the stoppage came, it came. If it didn't, it didn't. And I think he experimented with different weights, kind of going up into the two forties. And I don't think that really changed. So for me, coming coming in the two fifties, the mid two fifties, I think this is a bad way for Joe Parker. Just personally, I just think it is. Yeah, Andy Lee has definitely improved things, but I just don't know if it's enough. I really don't think it's enough. So for me, looking at the fact that Joe Joyce is coming in heavier as well, knowing how strong Joe Joyce is, and knowing that, look, he's not like Dylan White in in the sense of he's not the same type of fighter per se as Dylan White, but he can use his jab very well. He is very physical, and he will get mo. He he'll be able to push Joseph Parker back. That of which I've no doubt. And if he can, and Joe Parker is still struggling with that fight in him, and say it's a tough fight, and he's having to fight. Basically, I think Joe Joyce may actually make Parker fight when he doesn't want to. If you know what I mean, like not conserve his energy and maybe potentially empty the tank a bit. Therefore. Seeing the weights, because I did think Joe Parker would would come in. At, I didn't. I thought he'd come in in the mid two forties, maybe low two forties. My pick for this fight was Joe Joyce on points, but people, I'm actually thinking. I'm seriously thinking of going with Joe Joyce by stoppage, late stoppage in this fight. Now, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm wrong, but I just find this fight intriguing because of the weights. And I, I just can't see how 255 is a good weight for Joe Parker. Plus, you got to factor it in as well. Like, And I did forget to do this in my prediction video. At the end of the day, Joe Parker is with Ben Shalom. Ben Shalom is pro- quite new to boxing. I don't know if he has that much clout with boxing, to be honest with you, in terms of boxing, politics, and stuff like that. This is on a Queensbury show. It's on BT Sport. You can't really... You know, you can't. I'm not going to assume that they're going to give Joe Parker any fair crack, if you know what I mean. Like, if it's a close fight, it goes to the scorecard. I think we're pretty much sure that Joe Joyce would probably get the old rub of the green, whether he deserves it or not. Just based upon the weights and all, I'm just thinking this is going to be a Joe Joyce win on point, or Joe Joyce win by stoppage. I really do. I really think that Joe Joyce going to stop Joe Parker. I really, really do. And if he does. <sighs> I know Parker's not old, but by heavyweight standard, but that's going to take some coming back from. And maybe Joe Parker needs another few fights, few learning fights with Andy Lee against semi-decent opponents. You know, Robert Hellenius, although he's fighting Deontay Wilder, wouldn't have been a bad opponent just to test a few things out with, with a bit of risk there. But he's going in with Joe Joyce, so we'll see how this goes. But I just wanted to give my final thoughts on it. Prediction is changing up a little bit and, you know, I was watching Hatman's video on this and he touched upon Joe Parker struggling with taller opponents and that's definitely true. When you look at Huey Fury, he mentioned Razvan Kajanu. Now, the Kajanu one, Razvan Kajanu is not a good heavyweight and every time he's fought a top heavyweight or even a close to a top heavyweight, he's lost badly. But Kajanu, at the, see, that, that fight right there, a lot of people forget that. At the time, he was meant to fight Huey Fury. That was April 2017. He was meant to fight Huey Fury. Huey Fury pulled out and he fought Kajanu. Kajanu was Parker's sparring partner. So familiarity breeds content. And I think that was one of the reasons why Parker struggled is that they just knew each other from sparring. They knew what they were going to do and they knew how to get through it. And that fight was basically a sparring session. It really was. So I don't hold him really. Look, he should have really got rid of Kajanu. Kajanu's not that good. But I don't really hold that one against him. But Huey Fury, yeah, didn't look particularly good in that fight. There was someone else as well. There's been a few. I was trying to think of the other ones now. Demetrenko, we looked okay. But Demetrenko has no fire. No fight for the game. So, yeah. If Joe, Par- if Joe Joyce really does stick a jab on Parker, that's going to be interesting to see how he copes with that. Especially if he's coming in heavy. How is he gonna how is his foot speed gonna look? Is he gonna plod? So very interested to see how this fight goes. I'll leave it there. I'm not gonna have this go out too long. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already, people. We I'll do a review. I'm not doing a watch along of this car, but we'll do a review. And potentially we may do a little aftermath show as well, just depending on how it goes. So for now, lads and lassies, I'll talk to you.